Praise the Lord, everyone. Good evening, each one of you, and welcome to the North Goa YFOC online prayer meeting. Uh, wishing each and every one of you a very happy Feast of Saint Joseph Vas, and also a very happy Opinion Poll Day. Um, <clears throat> as I invite you for this meeting, I would like all of you to kindly, and as we are about to be led by uh, led in praise and worship by Amram, I would like all of you to extend your hands uh, towards him and uh, pray. For him, for this praise and worship, praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. We praise you. We thank you. We glorify you. Hallelujah, 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 Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Shigiri, Lord. Amma, Didi, Kiri, Karan. Shigiri, Kiri, Karan, Karan, Karan. Shigiri, Kiri, Karan, Shigiri, Kiri, Karan, Karan. Shigiri, Kiri, Karan, 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 so good evening, everyone. And, uh, as we start, uh, let us sign ourselves in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, some uh, some one forty five talks about the greatness and uh, goodness of God. So in that, like verse three, it goes like, "Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable." So, uh, with this on this note. Like, so we'll take our first hymn how great is our god and just ponder upon this verse his greatness is unsearchable so let's take our first hymn
Thank and praise you, Jesus, Lord. Lord, indeed, Lord, you are great, Lord. Lord Jesus, at this time, we to take this time, Lord, to thank and praise you, Lord. Lord, especially, Lord, to thank you for all the things you've been doing in our lives, Lord. Lord Jesus, many times we have not thanked you. Of, we've been caught up, Lord, in our routines, Lord. And Lord, sometimes we've not acknowledged the little things that you do for us. Lord, at this moment, we want to bring to mind all the things, Lord, you do for us. Big things and the small things, Lord. The small details, Lord, that you take care of in our lives, Lord. And Lord, we want to thank you for all these things, Lord. At this moment, I would like to ask everyone to just bring to mind all the things that God has been doing, all the things you'd like to thank him for, big things and even the small, small things. And just silently in your heart to say thank you to him. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, with, with this gratefulness, Lord, in our hearts, Lord, we want to lift our hearts to you and to thank you, Lord. And Lord, even more, we want to praise you, Lord, not only for what you've done for us, but Lord, for who you are. Lord, we praise you, Lord, and thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord, for the way, for how you love us, Lord. Lord, we praise and thank you, Lord, for your mercy, O oh Lord, in our lives. Lord, thank and praise you, Lord. Let us take the same. Blessed be the name. Thank you. 
Thank and praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise Thank you, Lord. Father, Thank Lord. you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father, Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise you, Glorify Name, Lord. Thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Lord, as we prepare this time to ask you to fill us with your spirit, Lord. Lord, we want to surrender all the areas of our lives to you, Lord, so that you can prepare us, Lord, to be filled with your spirit, Lord. At this moment, uh, there's this nice example that could like help. It's by Father Mike Smith. So basically, he uh, tells the difference between being transparent versus being vulnerable. So he says, like, uh, being transparent is like, uh, imagine you're like a fish in a fishbowl and uh, the person outside can see you clearly. You know, like the water, like all the areas of your life. So the person outside can see you clearly, like everything's crystal clear. But then you can go a step further and and that is vulnerable. That is to let the person inside the fishbowl. So he can not only see everything, but he can move things around. He can change your environment, the areas of your life. So at this moment, let's like let's not only tell God, like be transparent with all the areas of our lives with Him, but give Him the permission to move things around and to change things as His will ask of us. So let us surrender to Him in this way that He can change things as He wants to. Lord Jesus, at this moment, we want to surrender ourselves to you. Lord, all the areas of our lives, Lord, from the areas we struggle with, Lord, the areas where we fall weak, and also our strengths, Lord, the areas that you have gifted us with, Lord, all our talents, Lord. But along with that, we want to surrender our, our careers, Lord, our jobs and our, our studies, and also, Lord Jesus, and especially all our relationships, Lord, that we have. Lord, our entire life, Lord Jesus, we surrender to your will, Lord. Lord, have your way, Lord, in us. Lord, we lay this down, Lord, at your cross, Lord. Let us sing this hymn at the cross. Yeah. 
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, at this time, Lord, we ask you, please send forth your spirit, Lord. Lord Jesus, please fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, take control of our lives. Holy Spirit, we need you. Without you, we cannot do anything. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need your grace. We need your anointing. We need your guidance. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with your power, with your grace. Guide us, Holy Spirit. Enable us. Fill us with your power. Be with us. And take full control of our lives. We yield our lives to you. Holy Spirit, take control. Let us sing. Welcome. I request you to unmute and to pray in tongues. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
Lord, at this moment, Lord Jesus, at this moment, we pray, Lord, to draw us into Your presence. Help us to be close to You, Lord, and to worship You, Lord, to adore You, and to surrender ourselves fully to You, Lord. Fill us with your spirit, Lord Jesus. And as you have filled us, Lord, we pray, give us the grace, Lord, to truly worship you and to experience your presence, Lord, as you're really there, Lord. Let us sing this hymn, Draw Me Close to You. Let us worship for a few moments.
In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Amram, for leading us into praise and worship. And thank you, Amazel and Amazel, for accompanying him. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, as you know, brothers and sisters, uh, we are having... <clears throat> Our talk today will be given by Joel Dias and it's going to be on uh, substance abuse and its effects and how important it is for us Christians to be sober and alert as our enemy comes in various forms. Our enemy comes to kill, loot, destroy, whatever we may call it. Um, before he begins, let us pray in tongues for him. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She gave a lot of the petition. Over to you, George. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me and see me? I'm just wearing black today because I didn't want to highlight myself. But uh, am I loud and clear? Am I audible now? Yes. Okay. First of all, thank yeah. you so much for playing for me. Okay, and uh, so let's begin today's talk. Okay, but before we begin today's talk, I want all of you to get a notepad uh, or some kind of writing material, but get a nice writing material which you're going to keep. Okay, because I'm going to give you some points to note down. Okay, and please get a pen and a pencil, pen or a pencil, anyone. Okay, get a writing material and get a pen or a paper before we start. Okay. Are we ready to begin? Yeah. Really? Okay. Amram, Amazel, Blazel, Melanie, all of you all say yes, right? Anna Karina, Bla Blazel is on a separate phone to run a device, whatever the, the device. And also, very nice to have new people. Okay. So let's begin today's talk. It's nice to hear, nice to hear all of you praise and worship God. Okay. On today's day, today being the feast of Saint. Um, Saint, uh, sorry, Saint Joseph Vaz. Just get off my mind. Uh, so today being the feast of Saint Joseph Vaz, today's day calls us to meditate on a on a particular. Today's the topic of the meeting calls us to meditate on a on a special topic. Why this topic? I don't know, but the topic just goes hand in hand with preparation, preparing all of us guys, all of us guys to be saints. I would like to add a disclaimer here before I start. Okay. As I talk to you, I'm talking to myself. Okay? As I preach to you, I'm preaching to myself. So if any one of you feels like I'm talking to you, think of it. I'm, thinking I'm, I'm talking to you. It was a substance. Abuse. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. And so, keeping this in mind, I have prepared for substance abuse and its ill effects. Then I'll be taking you on to a, sub, a special certain topic. And then, then I'm going to change the topic around. Okay. I'll reveal a change around topic in some time in, when the time comes. Okay, so for you for now, let's just begin. Okay, anyways. So substance abuse, as you already know, and most of you have worked on this in your assignments, in your college uh, times. Okay, as you already know, substance abuse is, is a abuse of alcohol, drugs, and such kind of material that you use to uh, uplift yourself or to, or to lift yourself from a low moment. Okay, for example, alcohol, marijuana, nicotine are some considered drugs okay when you're addicted to something like this you may continue using these drugs or this form of alcohol despite 
the harm it causes now substance disorder is a disease that affects a person's brain and behavior and leads to an inability to control the use of a legal or illegal drug or medication drug addiction sorry drug addiction can start with experimental use of use of a recreational drug or in social situations and for some people the drug use becomes more frequent after a medicational use or after a uh, after a certain prescription okay some people get addicted to it and they keep taking it and they take higher and higher doses of it now this is how people get into uh, get into drugs or how they get accustomed to it the second reason of course you already know is people uh, out of socializing they tend to take it because youngsters and their friends take it and you know uh, that uh, they are once a certain friend is taking it or a certain group of friends are taking it in order to feel cool to feel accepted to feel one of them we also end up taking it okay so i mean not we but this person this a certain individual okay so the next thing is as time passes you may need large this the person who takes drugs may need larger and larger doses to get high soon you may need the drug just to feel good as your drug use is as your drug use increases you may uh, find that it's increasingly difficult to go without the drug attempts to stop drug use may cause intense cravings and make you feel physically ill this is what happens when you do uh, with this is what you experience when you have withdrawal symptoms okay uh, you may need help from your doctor family friends support from groups or something like that Uh, or organize treatment program to overcome your drug addiction and stay drug free now so far what i've been speaking to you is about drug use and you must be wondering like what is this got to do with me why why am i sitting here right and i'm sure none of you are um, fighting any form of drug abuse or i mean drug use right uh, but let's go to the second topic of second part of this topic okay look at this i'm about to speak to you about con addiction pornography robs us of pure and trusting relationship with god this is taken from the catholic uh, i'll just read to you the uh, one minute i'll just read to you the references first before i go any further okay this is taken from yeah uh, this is taken from the catholic news agency resource material harmful effects of pornography okay you can look it up i'll post you the references after this talk okay so uh to start with this is quite a long one yeah uh pornography robs us of a pure and trusting relationship with god as we all know that pornography is actually the uh is the is the satan's version of what love god meant love to be okay love is supposed to be between uh, intimately between two partners within the sacrament of marriage and pornography just does the exact opposite of that it makes this intimate thing of love between any partner so God desires a relationship with each and every one of us. He loves us so deeply that he created us in his image and in his likeness. But pornography shatters that relationship with God. Pornography is an addictive substance, just like an addiction, alcohol, drugs, okay, or addiction to a screen that is some form of screen, whether TV, mobile phone, whatever it is. More, more of the more of the drug is needed to achieve the same effect. as intolerance is built up okay but um, they say it is more easier to fight pornography than to fight drug abuse okay that's the, okay that's for a different day that's topic for another day but the increased amount of time viewing porn means this individual is less engaged in regular life activities whether that be a decrease in sleep viewing porn instead is instead of spending time with their families affecting their work performance all addictions consume their con- consume the addict's life and the same is a result with pornography the word pornography comes from the greek words now you know that i'm not really a fan of uh, this uh, technical things but just to help you understand uh, where does this come from or just to give you a little background about where does where does this word come from now i don't know about the history of pornography and where it started uh, but i feel it started um when i mean the earliest recount that i could have is is probably when those pharisees brought the uh, woman caught in adultery uh, to jesus this is the first the first recount that i could think of okay or even when you if you want to co- quote me on susan's story in the bible uh, there were these two guards who accused susan of um 
of you know doing things but then she was not really caught in the scene of adultery in the case uh, of jesus with the pharisees caught this woman in adultery they brought her to jesus and they said um, she deserves to, to be stoned to that okay by the way how would someone catch someone uh, sleeping with another person or, or even accuse that person of sleeping with someone it's probably because they've seen that person right so no one can accuse someone else of uh, of uh, sexual relations unless and until they have seen that person and if they have seen then they have equally committed that sin themselves right so i think that was the first this is as per what i remember okay or as per what i recall that was the first uh, account of pornography okay when they themselves when the pharisees themselves had seen um, such kind of sexual activity right in front of their eyes and then they brought that woman to jesus and that's the reason why jesus asked them uh, the ones those of you who have not come to get any sin may cast the first stone okay so in fact jesus was not there among them otherwise jesus would, would also have to leave and go okay but jesus was not there among them that's why jesus could forgive that woman okay well coming back to the topic the definition of pornography pornography comes from the greek word porn p o r n e meaning a harlot or a prostitute or a whore and graphos graphos meaning uh, another greek word which means writing or depiction okay that's why when we put the two words together we get the word um a depiction of hoes okay and that's what, what the what is pornography all about and webster's uh, definition of pornography uh, goes to say that a depiction of licentiousness or lewdness or a portrayal of erotic behavior designed to cause sexual excitement okay so this is uh, what sorry what webster's defines pornography as okay now you might say uh okay so i watch porn i don't really hurt anyone and uh, this is just between me and myself and i do it in the night or whatever time of the day when uh, no one is around and uh, i'm just doing this to release myself from all the stress of or, or release uh, myself from whatever i've been feeling throughout the day or release myself from any kind of um, feeling of unacceptedness feeling of loneliness feeling of anxiety feeling of depression or any kind of uh feeling of no one wants me or i'm nobody's person and all these kind of things okay um, so or sometimes some some even do uh, watch porn when they are uh, excited super excited when they've had a nice day so they want to end all things that end well that that begin well end well right so if they started a good day they want to end it well right so 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 some people do that there are some people who also watch porn because they feel like i do not have a partner and uh, therefore i need to give myself out to you Okay, well, so let's see what the Catholic Church says about the harm it does to your soul. Okay, we of course recognize that the consumption of pornography or the participation in its production and distribution has always been regarded as sinful and thus harmful to the soul and our external bodies. Sorry, and our eternal salvation. This has been the universal teaching of the Catholic Church. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph two. Two, three, five, four says this. Okay, what I'm about to quote now. This is what the Catechism of the uh, Catholic Church says. This I'm about to read this. In removing real or simulated acts from the intimacy of the partners, in order to display them deliberately to third parties, I'll just read this line again. Okay, pornography consists in removing real or simulated acts. from the intimacy of the partners i'm talking in terms of what happens in bed and if some of you have not experienced it uh, very nice is very good save it for marriage it's not to be experienced before marriage um so actually even i don't know what what exactly goes on there but that's not the point the point is uh what the catholic church says here is this this act that was supposed to be saved for intimacy between partners in order to display the, the pornography pornography displays it deliberately to a, to third parties it makes it uh, very easy for a third party for a third person to watch this and gain pleasure that is what the uh, catechism of the catholic church teaches us it goes on to explain that uh, and i quote it offends against chastity because it perverts the conjugal act the in, the intimate giving of spouses to each other it does grave injury to the dignity of the two parties so oh, sorry of its participants actors vendors and the public since each one becomes an object of base pleasure and illicit profit for others it immerses all who are involved in the illusion of a fantasy world it is a grave offense okay and i end the quote here 
this is what the catholic church the catechism the catholic church has to say about pornography okay uh, if you want me to read that again no no issues i'll read it at the end okay if you want me to read once again those who are not of the catholic faith can refer to saint matthew's gospel where the where in this uh, the gospel says like this in uh, gospel of Ma- matthew chapter 5 verse 28 everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery in his heart now i had a question asked to me once by a boy uh, who said oh, wait a minute only men commit adultery women don't commit adultery like is there nothing that women do uh, and it made me think for a while but yes i also i've also come across a lot of women in my in my journey of life okay who are who are also still addicted to porn and who have been basically they have not uh, not just addicted to porn they've been addicted to um, let's just give it this short term they've been addicted to giving themselves in love to the wrong people okay so uh, i'm just using a code word here love but that's not the actual love i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about okay see 18 plus word okay so uh, i don't want to disclose i mean i don't go get deep into the story but yes it is it is a scene on both the genders it is both genders that get involved into this it's not just a uh, woman it's not just men looking at a woman with lust but when jesus said that he meant to say that it is men who look at a woman with lust these people these men have already committed adultery he was just focusing he was just trying to tell the people who asked him the question he was just trying to get them to understand that once you already look at a woman and you desired her in your heart like you already coveted her that's when you already committed adultery he was not saying that only men commit adultery or only women are the cause for lust or adultery or something like that no he didn't say anything like that he meant to say that once you already look at sin this goes for men and for women once you already look at sin you already had the thought you already conceived it in your heart that you want this thing and that's when you already committed adultery and well for some of you intellects i have something little more for you okay for those of you who are uh, who always research on different different faiths and are very and very curious to know what other religions have to say about it okay um i know this is a catholic class and is a catholic teaching okay but allow me to take you to what the quran says about in the muslim religion about uh, porn addiction okay so there it, it says god desires to turn towards you but those who follow their last desires you to swerve away mightily okay say say to the believer that they cast down their eyes and guard their private parts that it is purer for them god is aware of the things they work and say to the believing woman that they cast down their eyes and guard their private parts and reveal not their adornment save such as it as is outward and let them cast their veils over their bosom and not reveal their adornment save to their husbands okay so i'm not going to uh, dwell deeper on this topic you already understand what it means right so the, and there is also one more thing one more uh, quotation of prophet muhammad that i'd like to uh, quote here he says to every religion there is a character and the character of islam is chastity so just think of it guys we know muslims for whatever they are like you always accuse them of being very uh, uh, rash rude or very offensive and very uh, okay first of all when you say muslim the first thing that comes to your mind is terrorist right so uh, yes for all that we know them and this is what prophet muhammad says imagine what jesus would have said about us he says imagine if i Im- just think of it this way imagine jesus saying this to us this way for all that christians are known for they're known for love and sacrifice and the kind of love and sacrifice that he himself that jesus himself in jesus was saying this he would say that the kind of love and sacrifice that i showed them by dying on the cross for them now i want to ask you one question at this point write this down okay all of you write this down am i am i a reflection of the love and sacrifice of jesus on the cross write this down no everyone am i a reflection of jesus am i a reflection of jesus make it jesus is love okay put that uh put that uh, in red comma apostrophe put the apostrophe okay the single uh no sorry it's a single inverted comma sorry put the single inverted comma am i a reflection of jesus love 
एंड सेक्रीफाइस दैट ही शोड ऑन द क्रॉस okay this is your first question okay for the day okay then uh let's continue okay after this is done let's continue now just to wind up with the topic on pornography i'll just give you a few um points okay points as in a few statistics uh this is now as you already know we don't i mean no one in india really publishes on uh, matter or 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 uh, facts um based on porn studies in india okay so most of the matter and most of the facts that are so let's call them research studies okay most of the research studies that are posted on on the internet are all mostly done in america okay some are some are done in in europe also okay uh, but this one is a study done on us adults and uh, yes uh, on adults and this was done on uh, people uh, one minute the number of years uh, yes and uh, this was uh, this is what was concluded from it okay just, just for your knowledge just for your understanding and then i have something to tell you after that okay so every second 25258 internet users are viewing pornography okay second statistics pornography plays a significant role in over 50% of all divorces third fact the largest population of internet pornography users are 12 to 17 years old and if none of us fit in that category then yes there's i mean there are definitely a lot of people outside this 12 to 17 age group who still watch on okay then the fourth statistic is the average of average age of a child's first exposure to internet pornography is 9 years old okay okay that side now um I told you something. Remember, I told you something in the start. I told you that after speaking to you about uh, substance abuse and its ill effects, I'm going to turn around the topic. Hello, everyone. Just restarting what I just started. Okay, all this while. So I'm about to turn around the topic. Anyone wants to guess what I'm going to speak about? Use your mics. Put on your mics and tell me. Or uh, use media. the. Sorry. Social media addiction. To your mobiles? No. No, but it's a good try. Huh? Anyone else? Please keep. Please give me. As uh, I mean, uh, please give me your answers. What are you thinking? What am I going to turn around the topic into? how to overcome i'm coming to that part how to overcome and that's there for all of us okay and that's there for all of us i'm coming to that part i'm still left with one topic i mean it's the part 2 of the same topic okay and almost the destruction it causes <clears throat> the destruction it causes uh, no i don't want elaborated okay elaborated okay i won't be talking about the destruction it causes because you already know what destruction it causes i mean everybody knows okay and i think i mentioned a few of them it causes uh, i mean substance abuse causes a uh, lack of proper sleeping patterns in fact a uh, lack of appetite or sometimes increase in appetite or sometimes it causes lack of uh, interest for things okay and sometimes always feeling of feeling of high or sometimes withdrawal feeling of extremely low okay going into going into uh, really low feelings low feelings in the sense that uh, the person just just covers up themselves in the room and doesn't want to face anyone doesn't want to talk to anyone and uh, feels completely withdrawn or feels completely out of place in this world 
uh, from the people around. Okay, so just some of the withdrawals that people face when they are into substance abuse, alcohol, drugs, and um, and pornography also. When you're coming out of pornography, these are some of the things you face. Okay, so um, it's not it's not it's not easy. It's not a it's not an easy struggle, but it's possible. Okay, it's possible by the power of Christ to come out of these things. Oh well, anyone still wants to give me a give me a guess? Tell me what you're guessing. See, the topic was substance abuse and its ill effects, and I told you I'll turn around that for the second part. So, give me a guess quickly. Addiction of some sort. Addiction. Yeah. Uh, yes. yes, it is an addiction of some sort. Uh, who was that who gave me the answer? Anna Karina. Yeah. Thank you so much. But uh, you might not really think of it as an addiction. Okay. I mean, all of you. Okay. Okay. I'll just give you one more minute. One more guess. Quickly. One more guess, and then I'm going to the topic. Regular substance. Sorry, regulated use of substance. Why? Because uh, there are particular drugs which are used, like uh, for anxiety and all, which is prescribed by the um, psychiatrist and all. So that can be one thing. You're right, and for that matter, even alcohol is prescribed by the way for some instances. I mean, prescribed is not as a medicine, but it's taken. In fact, yes, uh, in Goa, people take a little bit of burak. to cover up to clear their throats okay and in fact i've heard from a lot of people over these uh, two years of lockdown you might want to laugh at this but uh, i've heard from people that they some many people have literally cleared off their throat of this uh, covid uh, kind of uh, throat irritation with urak okay I, i don't know how it works out i never tried urak but uh, this this what i I've, i've been told okay uh, and yeah, yes the next flip method it works it really works so <laughs> it works so uh okay so it's time to tell you what i'm going to talk about okay you remember i said my topic was substance abuse and its ill effects right now i'm going to talk about abuse of substances did you get what i'm saying i'm going to talk about abuse of substances let's change it around i'm talking about how we abuse people in our lives how we how we get so accustomed to these things how we grow up within these things how we have made these part of our life how we feel, we don't even feel when we some, when sometimes we speak against some people or we talk against someone else and that's become an addiction today okay so as anna karina said rightly uh, i'm going to speak to you about another form of addiction addiction uh, which is not a prescribed medication but it is a different form of an addiction that we have picked up we have picked up we have grown with it over the years this is something that has come with us from our childhood sometimes or sometimes you know, it's just become part of us that you know sometimes when someone just talks to us the moment they talk to us we soon come up with it with, with what we are about to say or what we are full of you know because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks as scripture says okay so uh, i have want to give you this a few questions to ponder upon here okay at this point how many of us take advantage of incidents to bring others down to ridicule them okay write this down okay write this down as i speak about it how many of us take advantage of incidents to bring others down or to ridicule them just think uh um, but in a sense of superiority in this talk are we and i am uh, better of better than that person what is that person yeah that person doesn't even know how to do this doesn't even know how to do that and i think i am better than that person do we talk like that think about this write this down and the time you go for confession please confess this scene as i as i again as i said earlier in the start of this class i mean this talk as i speak to you i am preaching to myself as i speak to you i am speaking to myself okay so um don't think that i'm trying to target any one of you in this entire a uh, talk this is a talk to you and to myself okay it's it's for all of us here second 
let's go to the second uh, topic the second question or topic the second question here how many of us start a conversation when we know all the people around are waiting to speak against them too think of it this way imagine you're sitting in a class okay or you're sitting in a group a, a group of friends okay and maybe your enemy is there around or not there around and especially sometimes when they're not there around and all you know all your friends will support you to talk against a certain person we purposely bring up that topic we purposely remember that oh how she dropped that tea that day you know she couldn't hold that cup of tea properly also or she couldn't even uh, hold that cup uh, you know gracefully and then we make a big issue out of a small thing we make that a reason to argue or to fight with someone then maybe the next time when we meet that person we say okay wait you don't hold this cup okay i'll give you a paper cup or i'll give you a plastic cup and then this simply a small issue ends up uh, you know becomes a very big issue a small thing of just uh, a tea cup thing okay or something as silly as oh, she took my pen or he took my uh, he took a simple thing my you know uh, my let's say stationery from my table okay at my workplace and these small small kind of things small small kind of incidents leads up to something very big unnecessarily it leads up to sometimes uh, people i think it goes so bad and, uh, it was my fault my mistake any of us start to so know that people around us are waiting to speak against them too okay i'll post these questions again later on the group okay at the end of this class along with the references okay then third question the third thing that i'm going to speak about is how many of us pass judgment and comments on people on women especially just because of what she is wearing or against uh, whatever he or she he or she says like sometimes some of our friends put up some things on social media uh, maybe this particular girl is really looking beautiful okay but we have the uh, we as as church goers okay we as christians we as catholics we have the courtesy to ridicule them i mean we have the audacity to uh, tell them what they are doing is wrong but we, the way we tell them is in the way we criticize them and that's why they feel that we church goers we christians judge them and they say they keep saying they say keep saying don't judge me you heard this word very often that women say don't judge me or don't judge me for my for what i'm wearing or what I, whatever all this is and that's one of the reason many of them leave the church so i want to ask us this question at this moment am i the reason for someone leaving the church like this or am i the cause for somewhere for someone even thinking about why am i christian like why did i even come to this church am i the reason for this okay so i uh, think about this question write this down how many of us pass judgments and comments on people on what just because of what they are wearing or just because of what they said okay once that is done let's go to the fourth question how many of us treat people as substances to be abused we ask favors from them and quickly forget what they have done for us how many of us have taken help people around how many of us think that ah oh, you know i have a problem i can just ask this friend and i think he or she will just come to my aid okay so i think i'm not going to prepare today for this talk i think someone else is going to prepare for me i just give him or her my work and out comes the uh, print out okay and and i am ready to go no 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 that is not how it's to be done we got to remember we got to pay back we got to help help and not just help those who help us but as you say walk the second mile help those who who won't help us back help your enemies and as saint paul says when you help your enemies it's like keeping poles on the head yeah it's like keeping poles on the head okay and uh, that's what that's what as christians we are called to do that's what we are called to do as christians okay so uh, i'm calling you at this moment at this when when i speak about this fourth uh, question how many of us treat people as as substances of abuse 
I'm calling all of you to walk the extra mile. When I say all of you, I include myself with you. Okay, so I uh, I'll repeat the question once again. How many of us treat people as substances to be abused? We ask favors from them, we and we quickly forget what they've done for us. So how many of us treat people as substances of abuse? When uh, when we look at people on so social media and we just ridicule them, we, we accuse them. I mean, in our minds, we say, oh, what is this person's life like? She, I don't want to be like them. Or we or uh, when we look at certain certain women, we scan them from up and down, up to down. Again, this is another form of substance or abuse of substances, okay? Or a substance to be abused, okay? So this is another example of when we uh, abuse an incident, abuse a simple incident, okay? So. Uh, and nowadays, my dear friends, a lot of people, not a lot of uh, women do dress in tights, do dress very explicitly and things that are very tempting and stuff. So what do you do? What do you do in such, a, such kind of an incident? Sometimes maybe it's not that woman's fault or maybe it's not your fault that you ended up there. But sometimes you end up uh, seeing a poster, you end up seeing a, a holding somehow, sometimes outside the bus window from wherever you're traveling. You happen to see these things and these things. Uh, unintentionally excite you and then when you go home you're thinking about it so uh first of all scripture says captivate every thought and bring it to the feet of jesus okay and every sin is bound there at his feet okay that is one thing secondly uh always remember every sin grows it grows from what we see through our uh, from what we experience through our five senses so if you've not felt it you've smelled it you've seen it or you felt it somewhere okay so uh or you tasted it somewhere so wherever this thing comes from cut the root out cut the root out now if you want to say that a certain uh, board, board or a post or a certain woman that comes in a bus with you or comes to your office with you or comes to school with you whatever or comes to workplace with you uh, a certain woman reminds you of uh, bad things or bad thoughts or certain man reminds you of certain bad things or certain bad thoughts what do you do you pray a blessing upon that person. Surrender this person in, at the feet of Jesus and, and this thought that keeps coming to you. Pray for that person. Bless that person. You don't have to go and talk to that person. You don't have to go and talk to that person. If it's a case of a holding or a board or a poster, you don't have to go and tear it out, okay? You, it, sometimes it's not possible to go and tear it out, okay? So what do you do? Uh, the scripture in Sirach, the scripture which says, turn away from a good-looking woman. Now, he's not saying... Uh, when when uh, King Solomon wrote that, no, he didn't say, "Oh, disregard their beauty, you know, turn around from, turn turn away from them." No, no, no. He meant to say, "Turn away from a good-looking woman, lest you fall into the sin of adultery." Okay, so that is what he meant. So uh, let's let us first learn to, you know, our eyes got something called as eyelids. Okay, make use of them. So when you see a board like that, of course, if you're riding a bike, don't close your eyes, okay? But if you're sitting in a bus or being taken for a uh, drive, then close your eyes. Just shut your eyes for some time. And it will teach you how to overlook certain incidents, how to get over these things. Secondly, captivate every thought and bring it to the feet of Jesus. And with him, all things are possible. And you have a third suggestion from my personal experience. Uh, say the holy, uh, say, okay, if not at least a holy rosy, say three Hail Marys at that moment. Whenever you're tempted, say three Hail Marys. Maybe a rosary will be too long. And mind you, my dear friends, as I speak to you, there have been incidents in my life when I try to distract myself by saying the rosary. And after the rosary, I went and fell into the same thing back again. It's not easy, my dear friends. It's not really easy. But by the power that Christ gives you, I can I can boast in Christ like the, like in today's reading that St. Paul says, you know, in second, today's second reading, I can boast in the power of Christ that uh, because of the power that Christ gives you, you can fight this sin. You can definitely fight this sin. You can, uh, and at that moment, just devote yourself, give yourself to the feet of Jesus. Nothing else can help. Just give yourself to the feet of Jesus and tell God that you're doing this for him and you want to give up this sin. Show him how much you want to give it up. Cry before his feet if you have to. Recite these three Hail Marys if you have to recite them. If possible, say the whole rosary. But even if you go to sleep, uh, and even if you wake up with that intention of doing something like that, if you get up the urge of uh, committing such kind of a sin, even then, go to the feet, go back to the feet of Jesus. And even if you spend the whole night sitting in the feet of Jesus, that night it's better to lose one night at the feet of Jesus or at the feet of our Lord than to lose the rest of your soul in hell. Think of it, my dear brothers, as we listen to today's session, as we listen to today's talk, it, it could be just one other talk like anybody, any other day. But it will count only if you make the change to your life. You know, 
um, we all know about this first scene that Adam and Eve committed, right? And in fact, that is a that is today's sharing a scripture that I shared with you today morning. Every morning as I send you scriptures, that is today's scripture from Genesis, taken from Genesis chapter three. Okay, so uh, we learned that we learned that Adam and Eve committed the sin, no doubt, but God yet came to came in search of them now let's say whether god knew or god didn't know that they seemed okay but god still came back to search for his creation came back to search for his people he didn't let go of them just because they seemed and just because they told uh god Should have been some other. God doesn't care about His people. As uh, as I'm speaking to you, think of it for for the n number of times that we have sinned through our talks, through our desires, through our actions, through our posts on social media, through our comments with our friends, through the kind of talks that we talk with people around us, through through the through the content that we see that we browse through. Think of it. Every time that we have seen in all of these things, in all of these instances, we we think that okay, yeah, he will always forgive us. Okay, but uh, no, my dear friends, uh, God is quick to forgive. But yes, His mercy is yes, His mercy endures a lifetime. But also remember that there is something called as judgment day. There is something called as hell, and hell is real. Okay, so a lot of a lot of people. Uh, these are not my uh, sayings and quotations. These are people. There are people who have gone to hell and see seen a vision of it and come back to life. They say that there are a lot of religious people in hell. Why? Because we ourselves have not not pruned this part, this area of our life. We have uh, pruned all other areas. We have taken care of our anxiety, our worries, our tension. We give that to God very easily. Okay. Is we often, oftentimes we give our, uh, we surrender even our finances to God. Sometimes we say, okay, God, you take care of this, you take care of my health, you take care of my uh, all all these things, areas of my life. But when it comes to this particular scene that no one knows and no one uh, tells us or talks to us about, this is the area where we keep falling, and this is the area why we many times we do not grow spiritually. Also, it's because there is this one thing, one area in our life that is pulling us down. It's keeping us back. It's keeping us down. And and God doesn't want us there. God wants us wants us to enjoy life with Him. He wants to walk with us in this garden every single day. And my dear brothers and sisters, what a beautiful incident it is! What a beautiful time it is to get up early in the morning and get up and sit at the feet of the Lord every single day, or whether it's morning or any time of the day. It is such a beautiful moment to get up and walk with Him early in the morning, and uh, or any any time of the day. I'm saying early in the morning because I get up in the morning, but. Yes, any time of the day. Some of you I know, you all pray in the nights, and that's beautiful. Okay, before you go to sleep, what a beautiful moment it is to share those last few day moments of your day with the Lord, your Creator. Beautiful, right? And just think of it. One day God doesn't show up. Of course, He never does that. Okay, but think of it. One day He never shows up. Okay, one day when I'm speaking to you on the topic of personal prayer, I'll share with you a very important incident in my life where God saved me. Uh, from some serious trouble because of personal prayer, okay, and uh, and that day I just felt the value for personal prayer even more than what I used to always already do before, you know. So that happened just a couple, uh, not even a year ago. So and I I uh, I do want to share this with you someday, okay. So coming back to the questions, I had given you four questions, okay. I had given you four questions so far. I have a fifth question for you, okay. How many of us think of others? as this talk is given but don't look deep inside ourselves how many of us as we listen to talks not just this talk when you listen to talks how many of us are very easily very quickly think of ah this talk is for my friend or this is for this so and so person but we don't think of ourselves we don't think how am i one of this uh, culprit or this victim Many times, you no, know, we listen to talks in the church, or in, uh, I'm not quoting the church here, but I'm quoting the our religious communities. Okay, when we listen to talks, many times we listen to talks that are always against people outside the church. Okay, we very rarely hear people talking about the things that we ourselves do in the church. 
sometimes there is so much of uh, politics going on inside the in the church itself among people among uh, the uh, you know the people who stand as religious heads in the church no, i'm not saying the priest but among the lay people the lay community i've heard uh, okay i don't want to quote this thing but you yourself must have heard of how many times people who uh, we know people who are distributing communion and we say ah oh, that person is distributing communion are yes we i saw this person the same person arguing in the market no 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 my dear brothers and sisters that person is anointed to distribute the holy communion that doesn't mean that person's life is an anointed life they are at that moment when they are distributing the holy communion their hands are anointed they are carrying the holy eucharist whether they've changed their lives or not okay yes even i can deliver the best talk and my clap for me but at the end of the day what matters is whether i am led by the holy spirit whether my life reflects reflects uh, what the holy spirit has worked in me or not okay or what i have done or you know how much have i changed myself how much have i given myself to christ or how much have i still retain of myself that is what matters at the end of the day and that is what where my soul will be judged and that is that is what will will determine whether i go to hell or i go to heaven okay so coming back to the question i'll read that question once again the fifth question how many of us think of others as as this talk is given but don't look deep inside ourselves okay so the sixth question is how many of us are praying for our leaders and elders rather than pulling out their mistakes this is the last question that i'm going to speak to you about okay before we come to the end of this today's session then i'm going to post those sessions i mean the questions on the group okay so uh, how many of us actually pray for our leaders pray for our uh, for the people who uh, who lead who lead in, in you know leading roles many times we say uh, are this guy is simply in leadership someone else would have done a better played a better role than him or than her i don't know why this person has come here i don't know who has sent this person here remember saint paul says uh in the book of uh in in the in his letter to the romans from the second no not romans I'm sorry correct me uh, here he, this is in the scripture of uh acts of the apostles when it is said respect your elders because uh, sorry respect your leaders because it is god who has put them there in charge of you okay it's somewhere in the last few chapters of acts of the apostles okay so again i quote scripture there and i and i and i want you to understand this one very important fact it's very easy for us to sit and talk and say even 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 if any one of us has this desire to be a leader of whatever kind i'm not saying maybe politics maybe a religious leader maybe you want to be a leader in your domain in whatever you are best at you want to be a leader and you say to yourself that every time uh, every time you say this to yourself when i be there when i'm in that seat i will not do such things i will not be corrupt i will not do favoritism or i will not do uh, i will not support certain certain things i will be against certain things my dear friends when you are in that seat even even you will ask and act greedy for power okay everyone acts everyone becomes greedy for power when they are in that seat it is only the holy spirit it is only the lord who can hold you can keep you and all this can happen only when you give yourself to christ nothing else changes okay nothing else changes only the only difference is the holy spirit and it's the holy spirit that makes all the difference in your life yes there have been great leaders who have led us in the past and these people were people led by the holy spirit okay so um, as we come to the end of this talk i want to give you a few corrective measures or suggestive measures i don't want to leave you feeling uh, accused like i in fact when i am listening to you and even i feel convicted of my sins as i am as i am preaching to you and as as and to myself i feel convicted of my sins myself so i have been make, i have made a note of my sins as i am preaching to you but here are a few uh, corrective measures and some of uh, someone one of you i think was virgilio who said that i am going to speak about some corrective measures right yes here it is okay i'm going to give you 10 simple corrective measures on how to help yourself okay on or how, how to get over this how to overcome substance abuse and abuse of substances okay so first of all um let us let us write this down okay first the first point is uh one minute huh? Mm, yeah first point is accept that you have a problem and decide to leave it behind okay remember we can go on living our lives telling ourselves that what i'm doing is right okay 
we can always tell ourselves we can go on telling ourselves i'm alone i'm lonely i don't have a partner or see all my friends are going out uh they have they have boyfriends they have girlfriends in their life they're enjoying their life or i'm already 26 27 i'm it's time for me to get married but i don't have anyone in my life so i can watch porn or something like that or i can uh have my liberties i can talk the crap that i want because uh no one listens to me and you know and no one wants to give me a word but yes where the where the change starts to take place in your life is when you take that decision like the prodigal son to turn around from that peak time start to walk to your father that's where things start to change in your life so accept that you have a problem and decide to leave it behind okay this is the call for repentance the first key point is repentance and we've heard this word many times in the church in mission which means to turn around and all these is all fantastic but when it comes to practicing in our daily life repentance is gone out of the window here's where it starts here's where it starts okay it starts with accepting and i purposely didn't write the first word as repentance because the moment i say repentance everyone will feel like ah this guy is going to give me one more session that i already heard okay so and soon our minds get tuned off okay soon our minds get tuned off so accept that you have a problem and decide to leave it behind i want you to sit at the feet of the lord today after the session or you know when you get time in the day maybe in the even in the night if you're going to sleep and write this point stick this points that you've written down today on pen and paper take this points before the lord and sit with him and talk to him about your addictions whatever be the sin whichever be the area of your life that you want to remove that you want to get over that you want to change that you don't want to be the same anymore and and tell god how much you want him to rule over your life okay second the second point here that we are going to <clears throat> that i'm going to give you on how to uh, overcome your addiction is i mean our addictions uh, is receive the sacraments from time to time <clears throat> excuse me 1 john chapter 1 verse 9 says if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness the sacraments are powerful weapons against the devil's temptations if you haven't been to confession for some time find the nearest adoration uh, find the nearest chapel go for adoration uh, pray there for about five, at least 5 to 10 minutes and then make a good confession to the priest okay the church is an incredible place of healing and jesus desires your presence third thing <clears throat> pray pray okay and there's no one better than daniel who can teach us uh, how to pray i mean not exactly teach us how to pray but of course jesus taught us how to pray but uh, it is very it is very interesting to learn how to pray from daniel you know why because uh, every day thrice a day daniel would leave his office and go to a certain place and there he would pray he would he would he would face eastwards towards heaven if i'm not mistaken and he would uh, pray to to the god to the living god of israel in those days okay this was before the coming of jesus okay so uh, daniel says the lord our god is merciful and forgiving even though we have rebelled against him and uh, prophet mika goes on to say who is a god like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance you do not stay hungry forever sorry you do not stay angry forever forgive me for that but delight to show mercy this is mika chapter 7 verse 18 okay i'll read it once again who is a god like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance you do not stay angry forever but delight to show mercy you will again have compassion on us you will tread our sins under foot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea this my dear uh, friends is the extent of our god our god's love and mercy for us okay ask the lord for forgiveness and ask and allow him to walk with you through recovery the forgiveness power of the lord is mighty also ask mother mary for her intercession to live virtuously and to provide you with hope strength and healing from these areas you know from these addictions grow a special devotion to her and she will help you fight your temptations 
in this i request you to start to pray the holy rosary if not one pray two if not two pray three but at least pray one okay fourth thing here i would suggest you uh, suggest us to come out of our bad habits is make yourself useful okay uh, spend less time on social media and more time on social time keep social time not social not time for social media okay keep social time not time for social media be out there helping in the church charity some welfare associations or, or something or the other visit the sick visit the poor visit the aged like give a little bit of yourselves to you know others to them maybe to your neighbor sometimes sometimes your neighbor might be struggling to start the bike it would be nice if you could just go about and help them you know rather than uh, sitting home and just laughing it off you know okay so and rather than simply focusing on your own problems or my my own problems all the time thinking about myself of how uh, less fortunate i am instead of thinking of that uh, let us go out and be a help to someone okay the fifth uh, strategy that i could give you to fight our uh, bad habits or our uh, substance abuse is strengthen your will in all areas okay try out some sports try out some physical uh, physically engaging activities use your young days to cultivate hobbies and create memories rather than just regret life or rather than just regret regret friends or regret uh, relationships and all these kind of thing rather than regret these things try and give yourself give your young days to your hobbies to uh, create some happy memories go out there and do something express yourself uh, build a portfolio of what you are good at do your do these things when you are young so that you will have something to talk about when you are old and the sixth point that you could that we all could imbibe like you could learn that and that we could you know carry on with us is reach out and help someone whether in kind or to pull them out from an addiction have an accountability have an accountability partner and please don't have an accountability partner from the same gender okay uh, for, sorry from the opposite gender have one in the same gender why because when you have someone in the opposite gender it's very easy to uh, fall into unnecessary addictions back again okay for every small little thing that the uh, partner doesn't do for you or doesn't give you uh, we soon feel rejected and then we want to go back to that and we feel like why did i even stop that particular thing you know, i go back to even stronger or these kind of things happen okay so uh, and we and we end up end up being more broken than what we were before so please don't get in the into the habit of uh having a or get into the thing of having an accountability partner from the opposite gender have someone from the same gender because a person from the same gender will be able to understand you better always and it's better to have someone older than you okay older than you in the sense not uh, by one or two years but someone who's much more experienced someone a priest uh, preferably a priest or someone who's very wise you know wise man find someone like that and such kind of people you find them in the church or in the prayer group okay such people who have really given their lives to god and who are uh, walking with christ on a day to day basis seventh thing the sec- seventh thing i could suggest us to get over the substance abuse is stay committed to your decision to quit this addiction stay committed again i'll repeat this point stay committed to to quit your decision stay committed to quit your decision from this addiction okay don't get used to rewarding yourself from this because one day when you cannot reward yourself for coming out of this addiction you will fall into it even worse than before so let your drive be to be chased for your spouse whoever she he or she might be this is with regards to pornographic addiction okay but if it and it will if it is any other scene try and be a better person of yourself be a chased person for christ at least okay go if you are planning not to get married at least be uh, aim to be a chased person for christ okay aim to be a chased person for christ and again i'll repeat the seventh point stay committed to your decision to quit this addiction our eighth point given to us is i mean uh, the eighth point that i'm going to uh, give you is keep your device computer or whatever the device is in a public place okay so as to avoid the thought of you know getting to all these kind of things if it is if it's about your phone and there's no one around remember that god is watching you okay always remember be aware of his presence remember that god your creator who made you who formed you who knit you in your mother's womb is right there at the side of you and whenever you feel like okay no one's going to watch me now he's there he knows every little thing you're doing and and please don't tell god that oh i'm doing this just now just for now just for the last time or just today because today i'm feeling very bad no 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 please don't do that because there's no bargaining with him 
the day when god decides to snap life away life just goes and no one is prepared for it at that moment okay so please be ready uh, not to not for life to snap but be ready for to face god be ready to face him one day and and, and you know prepare let every day be a preparation to be ready to face our god okay yes you might fall sometimes but get up and fight back even more stronger than before uh, you know which brings me actually to the last point lastly be aware of one minute i think i missed a point in between yes i missed a point in between um ninth point have goals i was supposed to give 10 points no so ninth point um on substance abuse okay have goals okay whether short term or long term goals have goals chase them okay and this will help you stay focused and avoid distractions make yourself aware of the years lost in his addiction and how much you need to catch up on life not where others have compared others are compared to you not where others are compared to you but you have to realize for yourself where you should have been now where you have uh, you know based on uh, whatever your age is or based on whatever you have planned for your life i know sometimes the situations don't help or don't happen the way we have planned them to be but they will definitely happen so you go for it you give your best you train yourself for that uh, for that you know that goal or whatever you want to achieve okay in life and go for it go for it wholeheartedly this brings us brings me to the last point 10th point be aware of which occasions and what times of the day or which conversations or which intervals of your uh, or what are the intervals of your addiction like how often do you fall into it or how often do we get away carried away with certain talks or which are the people that we sit with and we talk to and you know that we uh, that leads us to lose talk or who is that one person that we keep on targeting whether there is someone around or not someone around there's no one around we still find this one person to talk against okay so or we always want to correct them to show them that i am right or something like that or sit over them or something like that right so all these incidents be aware of these and then the next time before this this incident comes i want you to i want you to understand that this is the time this is the time that this person uh, that this event or this situation is about to draw you into that scene is about to is about to pull you into it it's about about to pull you into a pit that you will regret all your life okay so this is the thing that you have to this is the thing that you have to be aware of at that moment and this is what i'm talking about gradually gradually reduce the rate and then stop this scene completely i know it's not possible to stop it one shot that you say okay today i'm going to stop it means today i want to completely stop it as not for the stop no 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 it's not possible okay but i want you to start making a difference and if you've already started well and good very good very nice some of you have some of us have started many many years ago and are still in the process of stopping it and i'll say you are still in the process of stopping it because i know that one day by the power of christ you will stop it completely okay so some people give into this scene when they are happy about something some give into it when they are uh, when they have they are going uh, through low times some uh, out of a feeling of anxious anxiousness some when they are feeling unloved also give into the scene but sometimes even when we have someone to love us the devil tells us that we are unloved i repeat that line once again okay sometimes even when we have someone to love us or we have people in our lives yet the devil makes us feel empty and he feels that there is no one for me at this moment or there is no one for me now or there is no one to talk to me at this moment there is no one to share my life with or i feel so useless i feel so unworthy i feel so hopeless or something like that why why do we feel such like this and why do we feel like this after knowing that god has um, has put all things aside and, and and sent his only son to die for us why do we feel like this when we know so much about our god i can uh, there are hundreds hundreds of scriptures in the bible that i mean more than 100 100 scriptures in the bible that explains god's love for us after knowing that god loves us so much how can we feel alone okay uh, so to fight this sin we must know that god says that he has inscribed my name on the palm of his hand he thinks of me day and night uh prophet isa even says that he has installed or he has kept sentries and these are watch guards he has kept watch guards to look over look after me and he has and he remembers me more than my mother would do okay so he says uh in in the book of um, even your mother may forget you but i will not forget you this he says in the i mean by the prophet the prophet uh 
I can't get his name right now. I know the place where it is mentioned, but I can't remember the name right now. But yes, uh, we've heard this many times. He, we've heard this in a song also. Even if your mother forgets you, I will not forget you. Says the Lord. Okay. So uh, there are countless number of times where God has said uh, that He remembers us, that He counts on us, He loves us, He loves us as if we were His own. And there's also uh, a scripture in the, in the book of Isaiah which says that God, uh, God says, "You are mine." Okay. I'll open it right away and I'll I'll tell you where exactly it is. Just hang on a minute, okay? Okay, so uh, look at this. Isaiah chapter forty-three, verse twenty-five. Okay, God says, "I it is. I am He who blots out your offenses for my own sake." Why do you think God would blot out your offenses for His sake? Why? Because He wants you up there with Him, right? Okay, and He remembers your sins no more. Remind me about the past. Let us argue together. Speak up and prove your innocence. Your first father sin and your mediators have rebelled against me. Okay, and uh, okay, but then then goes uh, God goes on to say that uh, yet He loves us. Okay, uh, then there's another scripture. Okay, wait, I'll just give it to you. There are actually countless instances I've actually marked them here uh, when I've read. Okay, so I want to tell you. Okay, here's another one. Okay. Um, Chapter forty-three, Isaiah, Isaiah itself, chapter forty-three, verse uh, one. Okay, but now says Yahweh, who created you, who formed you, Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. I have redeemed you means what? He has paid a price to have us back. That is the meaning of redeem. You know what you do when you take a coupon uh, to the, you know, when you go to a mall and they don't have change, they give you a coupon, right? And then you take that coupon, you go home, and after some days when you want to uh, buy some more things, you go, you go back to that mall. But this time you don't forget that coupon. You take that coupon with you. And this time when you paid for everything, and uh, I mean when about when you're about to pay for everything, you show that coupon and say, you know, I had some credits of the past. What is the meaning of that? You come to claim. You come to redeem that coupon. And that's the meaning of this word redeem here. You know, uh, fear not, for I have redeemed you. Meaning he has put. God has put His Son there in the place of that coupon to redeem us, to pay the price for us. Okay, and that's why He says, "I have called you by your name; you are mine." Okay, when you pass through the waters, I will, I will be with you. Okay, I know nowadays we don't pass through waters, but we pass through several kinds of, uh, you know, trials and tribulations of the day. People annoying us, people are arguing against us, people talking false things against us. All of these things, huh? And uh, what do we feel at that moment? These are the those waters. And when you and will will not these waters will not sweep over you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. Neither will the flames consume you. For I am your savior, I Yahweh your God. Then he goes on to say, I give Egypt in ransom for you, Ethiopia and Serbia in exchange for you, since you are precious in my sight and important. For I have loved you. And he goes on to say, God goes on to say. I give men in exchange for you and people in return for your life. So, how many times God has said in the Bible, you know, in, especially in the in the book of Isaiah itself, God has said it n number of times that yes, He loves us. So, keeping all these things in mind and knowing how much our God loves us, let us wind up. Let us take uh, this hymn, bind us together, Lord, as we come to the close of this session. Let us take this. Let us end with this hymn called "Bind Us Together, All Together, Lord." Sorry. Yeah. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Bind us together with love. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one body, that is why we sing, bind us together, 
us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together. Bind us together with love. In the name of the Father and the Son. Thank you, my dear brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for this session with you. And uh, I wish you all the best from today onwards. Because as I wish myself too. To walk this journey with Christ. Thank you so much.